here for today's half marathon hill run from hill to sea. Uh, here's a quick introduction of the stuff which I'm taking with me. So first of all, my iPod uh, from wherever I'm running on the pavements after the hills. Uh, I need some music and tunes and also just take some photos on the way there. Um, I've also filled up half a litre of this which is actually the recovery stuff. Uh, the 2 to 1 recovery isolate from Cymix which is like protein and carbs uh, so I'm leaving this at the bottom of Hill End so by the time I have run to that which is around about 8 kilometres in I've then got a water bottle just kind of waiting at the car park down there uh, I'm going to take a rucksack with me, I've got my running gloves because Kim laughed at me because I was wearing socks on my hands last time taking a protein cookie I had two sticks of dynamite uh, and I think that's it, have I brought my phone? No, okay, I'll need to find my phone as well. So take my phone, iPod, uh, GoPro, this is going in, um, and that water bottle is going to be left halfway around. And, uh, oh, toilet roll, that, that's the other one. I'm going to like pad this rucksack out so it looks nice and full with a little bit of toilet roll because you never know when you're running in the hills just in case you know, first thing in the morning, did I do enough of a poo this morning? Did I not? Oh, I don't know. Maybe let's just take some toilet roll, just in case. Uh, and also it stops the things bouncing around in the bag. So if anybody says, why have you got bog roll in, in your bag? It's safe to stop things from bouncing around. So here is the start of the uh, half marathon, which I'm going to do today, at the Flotterston Inn. Uh, this is the starting point. Also, it would be a good kind of ending point if doing it the other way, because then you can go and just drink lots of beer. Uh, so from here at, uh, what time is it? It is just after 8 o'clock. No, just uh, 10 to 9. Got to head up this way. And head up towards Glencourse Reservoir. But we don't get all the way there, because we take a right, we end up going up the hills up there. This map here is probably a better example. So what we're at, Flutterson Information Centre. Got to run up here and then take that off and then go up around the fort castle thing and then all the way up there, Allermuir and Care Kitten and then down that way down to s that bit over there, wherever that is. And just under a kilometre we're at our first junction to take off but already it's just doing it this time in the morning is so nice. Nobody around apart from, let's see if you can hear. Apart from the motorbike in the background. Oh, listen to that, just the birds tweeting away. So lovely. So the first junction I've got is of one saying Castle Law. So just uh, 900 metres in and first junction, make sure you lock the gate afterwards as there's lots of sheep. Uh, with babies here. But yeah, oh, no wind as well. Now, what we're about to go into is this area here, which is a Ministry of Defence kind of place where they shoot stuff. I just think they actually kill people, but uh, they do some sort of firing range up here. Now, it's a, br a good bit of a proper hill, so this is where it becomes more of a walking session. My main plan today is to try and get this where I have an average speed of six kilometers an hour, which to many of you may think, that's rubbish. However, that doesn't take into account the gradients going up and down and all the stopping for photos and blogging. So if I can do six, I'd be pretty darn happy with that. Mega cuteness. There's the sheep with her lambs. Hello. Oh, you're very cute, aren't you? Cute lambs, and then there's another one over there. Oh, so sweet running through hills with lambs and sheep. Sheep scary, lambs very cute. Oh. 1.65 kilometers in, we're at the regional park area. So at Castle Law, so we've come from here, and we've come up here, and now we're there. So uphill, 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 and then once there, all the way up to Allermuir. Uh, so this is, Dreghorn is three miles from here, Castle Fort and Earth House, 175 metres up this way. Right, I think actually uh, three and a half kilometres in, I'm going to go a little bit off-road because I think where I'm at just now 
possibly what I'm going to consider my most favourite place in the world and the most beautiful picture I know of in Britain, maybe Europe. Actually, one place I've been to Europe which was amazing was a place called Zell am See in Austria. Oh, beautiful ski resort. However, oh, hold on. Yep, right, right here. <laughs> oh, oh, getting a moosh. This, I would say, is absolutely amazing. No wind, only the odd bird, the odd sheep. A view all the way down Glencourse Reservoir up to Logan Lee Reservoir over there. All the Pentland Hills. Definitely running them one day. And then, as we go from there, over we can see, you can just make out the Forest Rail Bridge over there. And then we can see the path which we're about to go up to, to uh, Aller, Aller Muir, that hill there. And then we're going to be running over to that hill over there called Care Kitten. Ah. Oh. Just me, nobody else. The sounds of my feet on the heather. The birds in the sky, the old plane away in the distance. Absolutely stunning. Wow. Average pace is definitely slower trying to get up to Aller Muir here. It's, uh, it's definitely steep, but the cool thing is as you're walking up, you're just going, it's just a little bit, it's just up there. No problem. Every so often you just gotta do a quick turn around. Oh, amazing view. Okay, so made it to Aller Muir. Uh, in 40, 50 minutes to do that and uh, so this is 1,617 feet there's a one which is close to us 1,890 scald uh, scald law so that must be one of those in there there's a couple which are uh, taller there's a 1,700 uh, 2,700 but that's 29 miles away so that is really the horizon over there. But this, oh, amazing, 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 amazing. View all over Edinburgh. So, hold on. Okay, better view from up here. Um, so we've come from over there. We're at the top of Aller Muir. We've got the view over of Edinburgh. We've got the Forth Road Bridge over there. The Firth of Forth, which goes out to the North Sea. Now, the hills that we're gonna hit now, We've got uh, the Braids Hill there, then the Observatory Hill, and then the big one, which you see, that is Arthur's Seat. So we've got to get up to that, and then we're just ending up somewhere down at the coast there. But from here, it's a bit of a downhill. We're going to get to that the, the peak of that hill just beside us, which is uh, Care Kitten. And uh, this is where we try and pick up the speed now. So we've done the downhill, or no, we've done the uphill. Now it's like downhill with some hills in the way. But... Just what a brilliant start for what is a, a half marathon, if not a bit more. But whew, okay, let's get going. Oh, just before I go, average speed up to there was 5.32 kilometers an hour. So let's try and get up. As is customary when you get to the top of a hill, on the top of a cairn, the pile of stones, uh, you add some ones that you got from further down the hill. Do a little bit of balance in there. And if you're taking your time, spend a while making a really tall one, which is quite interesting. So this is Care Kitten. And I'm gonna take a two minute rest here, have a banana, and uh, cause I'm the next bit is some serious downhilling. So we go that way and then down past Hill End. And uh, ah, so got a good sway up there. So average speed, did I manage to speed it up? <laughs> 5.36. So even though it was downhills, they were actually pretty darn steep and I couldn't get much of a speed up. Um, so yeah, not much of a difference there. Ooh, this bit here actually, a ooh, ooh, little bit wet, uh, is uh, quite a narrow path. But quite cool. Ooh, haven't been doing this one before. I think this is the faster way down to the Midlothian Ski Centre. But uh, it's 
quite cool as we come around the corner here, I think. Oh crap, oh, now it's deep. Ah, right, having to seriously put the brakes on. Oh. Okay, a little bit scary. Uh, 10 past 10. Looks like quite a lot of people heading onto the Midlothian Ski Centre, dry ski slope, on a sunny day like this. I don't think I'd really want to be doing that in a full ski suit, that's for sure. Uh, it looks like some of them are, but I would say this is more kind of just trackies and t-shirt weather. However, falling on uh, dry ski slope stuff isn't uh, all that nice. But just now, this is the first time I've ever run down this hill. I've always come up this hill. Uh, so it's quite interesting and just feeling how nice and easy it is <laughs> on the way down compared to on the way up. Ooh, uh, through the Valley of Thorns. Uh, and that's me reach the car park at the bottom of Hill End. And to a uh, distance, seven meters, seven meters, 7.4 kilometers. Uh, average speed so far, 5.54, that's rubbish, uh, and calories, it's saying, for my body weight, it's saying around about 690 calories, and, ooh, where I left my juice this morning, still there, behind a thing, I don't know what that is, I thought it was like an electricity box, that would stop people peeing on it, because everywhere over there, where the cars are, I totally thought if I left my bottle there, some of you think it's just rubbish and put it in the bin, or it'd be where like dogs pee, so hid it behind that electricity thing. And now, now it's a bit of a road run, and we're leaving Midlothian Snow Sports Centre, and we're off onto the road. And this is where I give Kim a call to tell her I'm safe, I've made it. I pretty much know exactly 10 kilometers. Oh my god, big snot. Uh, 10 kilometers in, we now reach. The path for Braid's Hills, Braid Hills even, and uh, let's see, little map here. We are there, we've just come off uh, Braid Road, and I guess we just kind of follow the Braid's Hill Trail until we get to the top up here. But again, that was just a boring bit of road there, but now back into a little bit of hills at 10 kilometers. And strangely, I seem to have acquired a dog. Hello. No owners anywhere. We're just at the top of the Braids Hill now. That's a little peak saying we're at the top. Don't know if it tells me the height. Uh, no, nothing telling me the height. Just not very high. Uh, and it's really cool from here. You can see all the way over to the hill, which we've just run over and come across. And, uh, and now, great view. You can almost see. I've got the observatory hill just in front of us, uh, which is hard to see, and then uh, the big hill, Arthur's Seat. So it's cool, we're about halfway. Total distance so far has been uh, 10.5 kilometers, and we've done it in one hour, 45 minutes. So I'm just above the average speed of six, six um, kilometers an hour. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now, it's trying to figure my way down this hill and uh, I'm getting to the next hill over there, getting to the top of that. That's the tricky part. This is where I'm a little bit lost now. I don't quite know where to go. I've just come down from the Braid Hill over there and I've got to get to that hill over there. However, there's a valley down there, but I don't know because there's a big fence around it. I don't know if I'm just going into a golf course bit here or if there is a path down to the river down there. There's a little house way down in the in the valley. Uh, so this is kind of more the adventure part of the run. And disaster, just accidentally pressed the wrong button on my watch and it said, ah, oh, run complete, good finish, well done. I'm like, no, I'm trying to do the calculation for a whole distance here. So I'm just gonna have to do some clever math. Ah, okay, I'm on a path somewhere where it goes, nobody knows. Um, but, oh man, now I don't know what my average speed is going to be or anything. Urgh, annoying. Again, another awesome place in Edinburgh where just five minutes from a road, you're in Blackford, uh, 
Well, that's the Blackford Hill, so I guess maybe this is the Blackford Valley. And you're coming down into something that looks like this. Oh, ah. Uh, so you've got your river, you've got your trees, in fact. Let's just do a stop and listen. That's nature. That's audio therapy. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Very cute seeing birds fly up and down the river. Let's see, can you see any? Yep, here comes one. Again, if you were to see this part as a single part in the video, would you ever know that I'm showing you a run in Edinburgh? I don't think many people <laughs> We know that I'm right in a city centre. So that path definitely took me the way I was wanting to go. I've finally finished my juice and uh, about to go. I've got the staircase of death right in front of me. So I'll have my second yellow dynamite stick, banana, uh, for doing this hill here. So this is the observatory hill, Blackford Hill, and I'll show you the steps in a second. Now, if you ever want to do any sort of kind of like army training or just high intensity interval training, these steps in Edinburgh and Blackford Hill are, oh, they're a good challenge because they're all big, different sizes and all uphill. Uh, oh, oh, that's like gradient, I mean. But, oh, here we go. Had to ditch the jacket there, just getting a bit too sweaty. But that's us at the top of uh, Blackford Hill. So that was the Braids Hill over there and beyond that that was the main hill so we've just come from that valley way down there up those steps of death and now it's the home street pretty much just got that hill to climb and then maybe we'll do carlton hill as well carlton hill and you can see edinburgh castle quite clearly now and you can see the airplane just above it so from here we head down that way and over towards the next hill and if you're wondering why I kept on referring to Blackford Hill as the Observatory Hill, that's because there, that is the Edinburgh Royal Observatory building, which is open to the public, I think once, once a month, I think. Oh man, how pretty is it running in springtime, people tending to their allotments, and I'm running underneath cherry blossom trees. Blue sky, birds tweeting, lambs out. Oh, so beautiful. Kim, my wife even said to me this morning, it's like, where are you getting the motivation to do this? And I'm like, look at that. That's my motivation. Blue sky, no wind, warmth. <laughs> yes, nature. So, at pretty much half past 11, uh, five kilometers after I accidentally turned my watch off, average, Speed just now, 7.16 kilometers an hour. <sighs> I did quite a bit of walking there because my knee, left knee on road doesn't feel that great. I'm now at the bottom of the last big hill, which is that one there. So lovely morning, lovely day to do it. And a lot of joggers, a lot of joggers and a lot of walkers all the way up there. So. Just get the exact time to see how long it takes me to actually get up there. So the exact time just now is 11.33. So once I'm up there, I'll call Kim, tell her to pick me up at Ocean Terminal, which I think is about another 5k away. And, uh, but yeah, hill. Getting a little bit of a jock itch. Like, uh, I think I've, I've gone for the lightest trousers possible, but they're not the best fitting. As you think like I'm having them up by my belly button here. <laughs> uh, not the best. Uh, current speed is only like 2.5 kilometers <laughs> just because it is just vertical steps up the hill up Arthur's seat. Good thing there's quite a lot of other people coming up and down and just around this corner there's a great view. <sighs> Unfortunately the corner Seems to just keep on going round and round. <laughs> but, but yeah, already. <sighs> very, very cool. 
my goodness, it's almost like there's a festival going on at the top of Arthur Seat with the amount of people that are up here just now. Especially when you see it at the top of the hill, we're like ants covering it all. Little roundabout at the very end. Okay. 15 minutes. Okay, see you there. Okay, bye. Okay. Now, this is where I feel like an absolute champ, considering that all the hills which have climbed so far up to here are now just minuscule dots in the foreground. In fact, what I'll do is I'll change the settings so you can see a bit better. So I started from over at that hill there. So, well, if we stabilise this, you can see started from way over that hill, and then just where those kind of people are, that's the other hills that have been over. Now on Arthur's seat. Now we're going to head down that way and end up at, where is Ocean Terminal from here? Uh, that big shopping centre over there, I think. Somewhere. But yeah. So we got up to the top of here, it's now 5 to 12 and still feeling okay. Now it's time for the downhill down to the sea. Definitely think I'm kind of at my body limits at the moment. My left knee is not I thought yeah downhill on grass fine but oh left knee is actually really sore just now going downhill it means I'm kind of want to, oh you bastard I kind of wanted to go on the flat rather than downhill at any point oh, oh, oh. effectively out bumping this bit here so I've still got quite a bit to go Interesting to see how far I can go with a sore knee. The good thing what I would say about it is that it doesn't feel like it's a joint pain. It feels more like, oh, just swelling, just, oh, the tendon on the outside of the knee. Fatigued and swelling going on. But right knee, absolutely fine. Odd to have such a imbalance. But yeah, just come down from there and following these crows somewhere. Or maybe we'll go down this way. Let's give this a go. Ooh. Actually thinking that if this was a proper event, it'd be, this would be a quite good ending spot. Just at the bottom of Arthur's seat. That's me done an eight kilometers since that last, since I lost the count. And the bottom of Holyrood Park, you've got the Scottish Parliament over there. You've got Arthur's seat as your view. Dynamic Earth, a cool little kind of thing for kids to play in. And you've got uh, Holyrood House, which is one of the Queen's houses, Scottish house in Edinburgh. So this would be quite a good place to finish on, I think. However, I'm still doing a bit more. Closer up view of Scottish Parliament. Funny building. And a view down to Holyrood House. Very nice. So Holyrood House there. Scottish Parliament, there, Arthur's Seat, there. Royal Mile, oh, uh, fast. Royal Mile, up there. Oh. Home stretch downhill is down Leith Walk, down to the town of Leith. It's a separate town. Ah, uh, uh, there's Kim Colin. Ah, uh, finally at the bottom junction, Robert Burns's junction down here. Oh, and made it to Bernard Street and Constitution Street and that's me done 11 and a half kilometres from that last part so I don't know where that was but uh, average speed no I actually bollocks that I've got to see sea I've got to get to the sea that's more like it, it might not be the sea but it's the port ah and there's some big old cranes here which are kind of cool and there we go. Oh. Average speed, 6.3 kilometers, uh, an hour, yeah. And, uh, and cool bit to finish by. So, there you go. That was my oh, half marathon hill run. Nice. Uh, finish time is 10 to 1 in the afternoon. Uh, I'm now getting a drive back to the gym for a so sit in a sauna, and I'm going to get myself a beer and sit in Arthur's seat after that. Kim, Kim's 
Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Kim, Kim's very happy with that. <laughs>